Good morning, peeps. Welcome to another vlog. As of right now, we have a few guests over. It's a crazy morning, but we're having a lot of fun and we're gonna make it a very, very productive day. I'd like to remind you about the two individuals that are here. We have my sister and that baby Pascali. Hi! Hello! He's a natural in front of the camera. Looking good, looking good. <laughs> so the nephew and the sister are in town for the next little while, so we're gonna be trying to get as much time in with them as we can because they live pretty far away. They live an entire province over, like I probably told you in the last vlog. As of right now, Dad and I are just getting ready to get to work because we got a couple of things we gotta do today. Let's talk about that. Wow. So today, peeps, we're actually going out to do a hot water tank, which was a request at one point because we haven't done one on the channel. So we're gonna pop out, try to get one done, and then whatever other service calls come our way, we're gonna have to get done as well. Let's kind of, can you give him a wave? Yeah! All right, don't mess up the camera. Say bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Peeps, it is so difficult to leave a two-year-old at home when you can just go and play and do coloring and play some piano and do all sorts of stuff. But you know what? Life goes on. You got to get money so that you can afford the two-year-olds. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and by the way, peeps, you know what to do, baby. Here we go. The two milks, both. The two medium thick is it too much? Yeah, and um, a six uh, chocolate timbits. Two medium thick is too much, and how many timbits? Six chocolate timbits. Six chocolate timbits. Anything else? No, that's all. Thank you. When you find out it's a 45 minute drive to the job site, you take care of the washroom business right away. You know what I'm saying? Let's get to work. So peeps, we're here at the job site. I just wanted to show you what's going on. Here's a hot water tank that seems to be leaking on the floor right here. As you can see, there's a ton of water going on. Seems to be coming from the bottom of the hot water tank. So automatically, that's a big sign that there's something wrong with it uh, foundationally, and we're just gonna replace it with another one over there. So the first thing when replacing a hot water tank is you gotta basically drain the first one that's in there right now, and that's what this hose here is. That's game plan one. And as soon as it's drained, we'll be able to finally remove it and then start replacing it with this guy right there. Sounds good?
Alrighty peeps, here in the studio, I wanted to dive into the internet to find out a little bit of history on what the hot water tank is. By the way, all the links are going to be down in the description below, that way you can take a look at all my sources. So take a look right here, we're going to be doing a whole run through of Wikipedia right now, and we're going to start off with the storage water heater. And this is the typical model Dad and I install on a day to day basis, this is the one that we're looking at specifically. A storage water heater or hot water system is a domestic water heating appliance that uses a hot water storage tank to maximize heating capacity and provide instantaneous delivery of hot water. Conventional storage water heaters use a variety of fuels including natural gas, propane, fuel oil, and electricity. Less conventional water heating technologies such as a heat pump water heaters and solar water heaters can also be categorized as storage water heaters. And this is the typical hot water heater that you're going to find in the everyday home. So the rest of the article will tell you all the different ways that hot water heaters are powered essentially. Some are done by through solar, sun through fossil fuels, fire water heaters, sun through wood, some through electrical water heaters, and some through thermal and electrical systems. The one that we're installing in this video right here is an electrical water heater. That's why at the end of the installation, you're going to see us actually hooking it up to electrical. So let's talk about how the hot water heater works, okay? The job of the tank type heater is not only to heat the water, but to store it until it's ready for use. Therefore, in addition to the tank's heating system, every tank is equipped with insulation to keep to help keep the water warm between heating cycles on top of every tank you'll find the water supply and delivery pipes the supply pipes route cold water to the bottom of the tank through the dip tube the hot the hot water delivery pipe takes water from the top for safety all water heaters are equipped with a TNP valve a temperature and pressure relief valve this valve opens if either the temperature of the pressure of the water exceeds a safe limit the valve is connected to a pipe that runs down the outside of the tank ending about six inches from the floor is a good idea to keep a bucket under the end of the pipe to catch water if the valve opens. Temperature and pressure relief valve should not be connected to a drain. If the valve did open, a sign that a problem exists, you might never know that it had opened. Most tanks are made of steel, which is glass lined on the inside to help prevent corrosion. In fact, corrosion is the primary reason that tanks fail. Once rust produces a hole, there are temporary fixes, but the tank should be replaced. All tanks also have an anode rod to control corrosion. The magnesium anode rod protects the tank by corroding in place of the steel. Because the rod is designed to corrode, it will eventually wear away. After this happens, corrosion of the steel accelerates. It's a good idea to check the anode rod once a year and replace it if necessary. At the bottom of every tank is a drain cock to empty the heater and a valve to supply water allows you to shut down the hot water plumbing without affecting the cold water supply to the house. And that is a basic overview of how hot water tanks typically work. So if you take a look at this diagram right here, what you have is you have your cold water coming in you have your cold water coming in you have your hot water coming out what occurs is you have a couple of elements inside the tank that are heating up the water this is the anode inside the middle which is to sacrifice itself so that there is no corrosion inside the tank as it heats up it also is insulated so that it can also keep the water as warm as possible for the longest duration of time that way you sort of save on money in the long run this is the temperature and pressure relief valve over here and this thing activates basically Basically, when there's a buildup of pressure inside the tank or if the hot water gets too hot to the point that it harmed the individuals inside the dwelling. Mm -hmm. 